uh, so Brian, would you like to share with us how you got started with WordPress? Um, sure. Um, I had a friend recommend recommended to me. I was um, still I still like a lot of H just custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I was originally going to plan on making my website with it, but I can't for doing it for personal reasons. But I would say a friend recommended to me to get into WordPress. Okay, cool. And let's see, um, Denise, I think you said you're just starting off with WordPress. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I have uh, already opened an account and I have my own uh, WordPress site. But my problem is uh, maybe this is the simple, uh, the most simple uh, problem, but I cannot update my, uh, uh, my site. Okay, I bet you someone here could help you with that. So are, do you have your username and password for WordPress? Yes. And so when you go to update the site, are you getting an error message or? Yeah, it's written an automated WordPress update has failed to complete. Uh, I have tried to clean all the uh, comments and the plugins, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing. Um, was successful. I was unsuccessful. Do you know who's hosting your site? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Kebir Host. There's a hosting site. Usually, with a problem like that, I I my first reaction. I'm not familiar with that company. My first reaction would be to see if you can contact the host for some support and they may be able to tell you what's going on. That seems a little bit odd. I've never heard of that particular problem. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? Well, when you, when you say you can't update the site, are you referring to content on the pages, the WordPress version? Is there a certain something in particular that won't update? Because I've seen that different yeah. from God's house. Uh, yeah, actually I have uh, made the screenshots if I can, I can send it on uh, chats, but. Yes, so if you can e enter that into um, the chat system and then we can maybe take a look at that. Um, so let's see, who else has not introduced themselves? Uh, oh, I see Jonathan's on. Hey, how you doing, Jonathan? Hey, Chuck. Yeah, I had to go through all the little rigmarole of getting, figuring out how to get in here, but. Yeah, I figured it out. Hi. Right on. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you do. I run a small agency. We are specifically WordPress developers and designers. And uh, I've been working with Chuck a little bit, uh, especially recently. Um, we design websites for small and medium businesses, focus on nonprofits specifically, but pretty wide range of stuff. We're seven members and... Uh, uh, we're spread out around the world, all working remotely, and yeah, it's 6 p.m. here in California. And you also provide hosting, so if you, you also guys do need, hosting. need yep. WordPress hosting, keep Jonathan in mind, no panic. All right, let's see who else we got. Um, Ron, the web guy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron, uh, also known as Ron, the web guy. I live about 80 miles east of Seattle, Washington. I started developing and hosting websites back in 1996. I've worked for Microsoft, Samsung, T-Mobile, Nintendo. Well, thank you for that, whoever that was. <laughs> I put them in the I put them in the waiting room. Okay. I think so, once the presentation starts later on, at some point we should re-enable it. Yeah. Maybe a little bit later in though. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I'm not letting Sankar back in. I'm pretty sure that was Sankar. It was. I was looking okay. for the mute too. All right. Um, okay. No, he's going. in the waiting room. He's not coming back in. Not on my watch. All right. So <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Ron. Actually, website. actually, I just shoved him in the airlock. <laughs> oh you were the one that did that okay i okay so i, I, uh, I don't think that he needed a good talking to i think he just needed <laughs> up. 
of oh, you gave out, a, out, out oh. into the black death of stip of space. <laughs> okay, thank you, Edward. So we're on the web guy. Why don't you start over? Because all right, I... yeah, that was very <laughs> interesting. Uh, I'll make it short and sweet. Ron, the web guy, uh, near Seattle, Washington, worked for a lot of big corporations, been developing and hosting websites since the mid nineties. I own a, uh, a web hosting company. Now I do a lot of search engine optimization, um, and love it. And these, uh, meetups are amazing. I learned so much from everybody. Thank you. Welcome. And let's see, uh, now I'm getting confused as to who's already introduced himself. Brian Hankins, did you introduce yourself already? Yes. That okay. Was the first one. And then Gary Avant, did you introduce yourself? Nope, not yet. Would you like to? Uh, sure. My name is Gary Avant. And I live in San Diego, California. I have my own business for about 22 years now. <clears throat> and we specialize in anything on the web uh, and processes and infrastructure also. Uh, so in this, in this uh, workshop, I'm looking for advanced uh, GA4 best practices and uh, information. Uh, we have multiple clients transitioning over. And so we're uh, looking to get that expertise and uh, make the, the path smoother than it's been so far. As you know, Google is not the greatest at uh, the technology, even though they claim it. Um, so we're just trying to work our way through it. <laughs> Fantastic. I think you're in the right spot. Uh, Daryl's going to present on exactly that. Now, let's see. Veronica, did you have a chance to introduce yourself? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, uh, Veronica here. I am in Malaysia. It is 10, 13 a.m. In, in Malaysia right now. I am not a technical person who have to learn on, on WordPress, yeah, to manage a um, few of my own uh, websites. Thank you. Welcome. And let's see, Wendy Cover, have we heard from you yet? No, I, um, yeah, I'm pretty new to WordPress and started because I wanted to start a blog. Um, so I've launched the website, but um, yeah, still working out a lot of things and kind of wanting to just connect with actual people in the real world who are doing things like this, as opposed to just reading things online about how to do stuff. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Welcome. All right. So let's see. Did everyone have an opportunity? Well, Edward, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, I'm Edward Sanchez. Uh, I have a company called Brass Ring Web Design. Uh, if that's too long, remember my WordPress guy, at my WordPress guy, hashtag, whatever. Uh, I'm in San Diego, recently out of La Jolla in the midst of a move. And uh, I've been working, I've been building websites since 1998. Um, I moved exclusively into the WordPress world in uh, 2009, 2010, and have been specializing in that ever since. Currently, I uh, work mostly with small clients um, and basically provide a bridge between this really robust, great platform called WordPress and the ability to actually build a good website with it. Um, all my website uh, projects include coaching and uh, training and coaching so that my clients, and, and the planning process is, is pretty robust as well because I wanna make sure that when I launch the website when it's ready, <laughs> that my clients know what to do to keep the site relevant and attracting traffic, uh, which usually means having some form of outreach in terms of uh, email marketing, uh, social media, that sort of thing. So that's me. All right. So um, I want to ask the group expert on Zoom for security. So I've enabled the waiting room. Should I lock the meeting at this point? Is that what you said, Daryl? I, what does that mean when you lock the meeting? No one else can join. I yeah, believe. I would Wait. hate to do that. Uh, so many people show up late. Okay. 
All right. Well, we do have the waiting room going. So yeah, that's um, a good buffer. It just means someone we, we don't want to block people just in case. Okay. Yeah, people show up late pretty routinely. We've had them in, in the time that I've been um, the organizer of this group. People do show up throughout the, the 90 minutes that we have slotted. Plus, also, as you may notice, we'll, uh, I like sometimes the meeting after the meeting is better than the meeting. And so I'll, I'll leave the parking lot as it is uh, open for another half hour and people show up, you know, so if if somebody comes in and drops trowel like that gerald fellow uh you know at least they weren't profane and we'll we'll try to jump on it and and de deal with them suitably okay sounds good now i would suggest that everyone um aside from the speaker mute their microphone and that kind of keeps the background noise down we can um, actually mute everyone chuck we yes mute does it go mute all and then when we're ready and then i'll just unmute myself there you go okay when we're ready. could uh, you add captions um chuck do you have captions available that you could show for the everybody speaking uh i don't know how to do that let's see and how do i, I didn't know that existed i think you go to the uh, right talk participants as a host, and then you will be able to click to unmute everyone. Well, we, for muting, he was asking about for cap. Yeah, I see what a mute, but for captions. Yeah, I see what a mute everybody. Why don't you go ahead and uh, do that and um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Daryl, and just start, and then um, I'll keep an eye on. The waiting room and then you know we'll see um how your presentation goes and questions and then we can do some more kind of networking after you give your presentation does that sound like a reasonable plan that's my plan all right so thank you daryl for speaking and take it away okay oh Everyone muted? Good, I'm not muted. I'm Daryl. I've had my own company for since about 2014. I'm actually in Kelowna, British Columbia. So I'm in Canada. And I used to do WordPress. I used to do video editing, social media management, pretty much everything under the sun, like everyone. And now I specialize in overall digital strategy, and I focus primarily on digital paid advertising. And I've worked a lot with B2B, with lead gen in the past, like plumbers, things like that, usually smaller to medium companies. And as of the past two, three years, I've done more B2B. I've done work in the life science space with LinkedIn ads, SaaS on LinkedIn. So I've been diversifying since then. Google, LinkedIn are two of my strongest ones. And I partner up with people in the WordPress space, uh, people who, who run LinkedIn, at Facebook ad, for example. So even I have my specialties for ads. So that's why I'm here. And Google Analytics 4, because I run Google ads, I have had to start to pick up how to set it up because as we move forward, Google has given a hard deadline and said, you must adapt or it's not going to work anymore. So with that, I'm going to segue into my presentation. OK. I don't normally wait. I did a full screen share. Oh, you saw a sneak peek. Oh, wait, you're seeing everything. <laughs> I don't do this very often. Hang on. I think I need to, what if I just go over here and then share screen? I think it's my Zoom setting. Is that full screen for everyone? Wait, see all slides, hmm. display settings. Oh, oh, here. Okay, I swapped them. 
Does everyone just see full screen now? Oh, wait, you're all muted. You can't hear me. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Sorry. Okay, here we go. So, why do you need to migrate to GA4? I'm going to see how do I get the chat? Is that hidden? Yeah, this is being recorded. And okay, I have chat open now. So if anyone needs to type anything in the other window here. All right, so as of, on July 1st, 2023, Google is going to stop processing universal analytics, which was introduced in 15 years ago, 2006 or so, it was mid 2000s. So with that being said, there's millions of users still on it. And if you're still running it, what that means is if you've been using it to track data, it's converting what people are doing, it's just going to stop working because Google wants us to move to GA4. And in this presentation, I'm going to cover what the migration process will look like for you. All right, so first, let's start with what is different for GA4. In Universal Analytics, it was driven by people visiting your website and then taking action. So it was based off a session and it would track page views. So it was more of the traditional web experience. And GA4 is based off events. So when they visit, do they click? a button, how far are they scrolling? All those things are tracked out of the box. So it allows you to track more things like that. Oh, well, just so you know, I will be, I have some articles to share after this. I'll walk through and there's a live Google demo so I can answer questions live. So I have a few slides here. I'm gonna give a highlight and then I'm gonna move over to that. All right, deployment and setup. This is the Real quick version, if you're new to it, on how I deploy it and the process. The first thing you want to do is figure out what you are tracking in Universal Analytics and determine what those look like. Is it a website view? Was it? There's lots of things you can track. And then once you know that, you can then look at GA4 because GA4 has some of that. However, the way it you implement that is different. It's different. And same with your e-commerce goals. Those are all built in. Then this is the easiest way to get these events. So when an event is on your website is when someone takes an action, it triggers an event. Someone raised their hand. Oh, oh, it's that same person once in. <laughs> we'll just ignore them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So the easiest way to do that with Google Analytics 4 is Google Tag Manager. What that does is it monitors for events on your website. It can be clicking, scrolling, website view, anything, pretty much anything. And then it, cause it goes by the elements, the code, and then you can have it trigger an event. So an event could be a trigger of any number of actions taken on the site and then fed through. And we'll send that to Google Analytics for. So that's the easiest way to send that. And then you also need to be tracking the people on your site as well. So with, you put the GA4 on your site. So when it's running, it'll be recording what the person, what they were doing. And then when it sees something triggered, Tag Manager will see that and tell it to make it an event which creates a conversion. I'll, there's going to be a demo on this, so it will make more sense. And server-side tracking. So this one, this is, so if your company has security or you want more control of your data, that's the really short version on this. And it has to do with the cookie lifespan and how much control you need over it. So if you're in an information sensitive industry, then this is important. 
Okay, so this is kind of, well, I'm going to run through an article on this, but the summary is it's browser life here. If you have any of these compliance, especially if you're outside of the US. And it allows you to control what data is being recorded. And it also gives you a first party cookie, which a browser will prioritize, which is why you get the longer cookie life, which means you retain more data. So there's some resources here. I'm going to share these now and walk through these with you. And you can, I'm going to share my other window here. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions now, you can unmute before I go to the next step. Because that was a high level. I wasn't 100% sure in the audience. So that's everything I wanted to touch on. And then I was going to walk through some articles around that. So if you want, that's okay. You can unmute now and then I'll, go, I'll continue. How do I? Okay, no questions. I'm going to share the screen here. Okay, so there's an article here. This covers everything you need to know. Now, this one's pretty self-explanatory, but I linked it just in case. And Okay, you want the links in the chat? They're actually in the presentation if people want a copy of that. Here, I'll put them all in the chat though for while we're going here. These are all the links I'm going to be using. Okay. So, with server side tracking, when, when you're here, the reason this is going to be when you're collecting data with Google, when it's through Google, it's, it's collecting everything. So the concern with privacy here is you don't know what Google's collecting. They have certain things they are collecting, but they don't always tell you. It's Google does saying it's good, but we don't always know. So if you need that extra layer to make sure you're doing the right thing, and only collecting it with server side, you're able to send it to your own server. And from there, you will only record the data that you need. And that's very important, especially for GDPR is one, if this, which stated in here. And um, there's, there's other laws out there. And there's other benefits. The other one, so the list goes on, there's more accurate data because it's a first party cookie, browsers are blocking the third party cookies. So right now at Google, the cookie can be considered third party on your site because third party means it's not linked to your domain. So when it's from your domain, you will be able to collect more data because more browsers will trust you. So right now is with companies losing data, you're going to get more data and it's more accurate. You'll get more page speed because you don't have to load as much. I'm not a developer on this. So I believe that just means because you're putting its tag manager and then it's, you're running the analytics on your server. It's just setting just G Google tag manager. It's just sending over the events, I believe. This, I'd like, this would be good to learn from a developer. I have had someone I work on this he he's very he's really into the server side tracking side of things and he's met, worked with some large clients he actually shared this with me so it's real it's one of the better articles so and third you get first party cookies so they live longer as i stated you're controlling the data privacy yeah, and then if you read this point here, the regulations of GDPR, the CCPA, all of these certain industries, you, you have to comply with these. Your ad blockers won't, won't be able to block it because it's a first party cookie, they won't block it. They go by your domain. So if you run uBlock, for example, on Firefox, it can block a lot of stuff, analytics, you can block ads. It's more likely to be viewed as it's from the site. And this one here, I'm not exactly developer, but it, your data is being sent, I guess, if so. 
some of this, you know, if someone, there's certain sides of this where I'm not actually a developer, I know enough for the ad. So does anyone have any questions on that part? So I, I have a question. I mean, are you anticipating, uh, did you say the deadline was uh, July 1st of this year? Yeah, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, July 1st. So are you anticipating just a ton of work uh, doing these kinds of conversions right at July 1st? Because most people, human nature is to procrastinate. It's like, you know, when you do your income tax, the CPAs are getting bombarded on an April the 15th. Are you going to get a big spike of work at that point, do you think, Daryl? Possibly. Google's been pushing people for two years and they didn't listen, including me, until they finally said, we're shutting it down, so do it or else. Yeah, people need a deadline. I can't predict that. It may happen. Ideally, though, it would be fixed now. So you have things in place. So Google Analytics is time to start collecting data instead of waiting so you're not collecting anything. Because the downfall of that is if you're running any form of advertising that relies on it, any type of software, then you're going to, your impact there can be significant. Because if you have, things relying on that data, especially Google ads, the efficiency of your ad account can just plummet because Google uses this conversion data to continually optimize. It relies on it now. It's AI driven. So, so that, if it, yeah, if you're doing a uh, Google pay-per-click is, does that give you an advantage to use this new platform sooner? as opposed to people that are still on the legacy GA? Not right, not really. There's GA for audiences. In some ways there are. I mean, for example, you can set up certain events. I mean, but overall, it depends what you wanna set up. Some things are easier in universal analytics versus GA4, some things aren't. So it depends on what you were tracking. It was quicker to set up a thank you page conversion in universal analytics, whereas Google Analytics 4 adds a few steps. E-commerce out of the box worked on, Uver on universal analytics and naturally sent more data out of the box on GA4. It can work, but there can be a little more configuration. So it depends on the use case. But, but GA4 is definitely more customizable and the things that it, it tracks and allows you to track what people are doing, it, it'll by default let you see how many people are clicking and more how far they're scrolling per page by default. Right? All those things you wouldn't see in universal analytics, it's not just looking at balance rate. So you get a fuller picture of the data. And to show you what I mean by that, Google has a demo account, which I've linked. It's the support.google analytic answers. They have a few demo accounts that tells you how to get access. So I'm in one right now. So if you're looking at events, you'll see you can now set custom events. And within these, you can set more parameters. So these used to be called goals. And then you would say in universal analytics, I, you achieved a goal. Well, now you can have these events and they're more customizable. And they can be used for other stages, whereas goals used to be more all about that end goal from so visiting your page, which allows you to, when you're building a report, to have have more customization at each stage. Universal Analytics while getting people to your page and a goal, what did they do when they got there? It was based more around the older analytics, the older web experience. And this really captures a lot more. And they've changed some titles too. So if you're looking at real time, there's small changes too. This is where Pete, you can get thrown off. So if you're looking at real time, for example, they've changed things. It used to be page path. It's now page title. 
things like that. So if you go see here, so page title would have been page path. So part when people are moving over to Google Analytics for the learning curve, is it how it records and just what it calls some things. And even how you do the conversions are different. So, so under conversions, instead of a goal, you do an event, you check conversions now. And when I was mentioning the setup, you'll see, see how it checks all this stuff. This is stuff you can have it do right out of the box. This wasn't in universal analytics. And you can modify, Yeah, there's a lot to cover on this. I mean, I could go more advanced if there's questions. Google Analytics 4 is a really wide topic. There's audiences you can market. So the, the important thing to know is when is to move when you're moving from universal analytics, the easiest way is put it on the site and use Google Tag Manager. And within Google Tag Manager, send the events. And then from there, you can modify within Google Analytics 4. And that's how I've done that. And I've passed revenue from Shopify to Google Analytics, things like that. So for the clients that you've converted, are they um, seeing value in this uh, based on what you're finding? I mean, is it providing some good insights into how to improve the site and things like that? Yes, it definitely does. You can, you can, because you can build custom reports. Because when you go under your reporting, you're under, it's called Explore. You've got these different reports. Mm -hmm. You can just see more information and where they're clicking naturally. Like if you go under this one, say someone set up. So you could do this stuff in Universal Analytics. I guess this one doesn't want to work here. I'll still go into these ones. A lot of it's similar. If you want, if you want to start getting into some of it's just presented differently too. You still have to do the UTM tags. They're getting value because they know starting in 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 uh, July in July their ads are going to keep running and they're not going to just stop working as efficiently. So a lot of this change is there's client, if they didn't sunset this, we could have kept running universal analytics. So a lot of this change to Google analytics four is it does some things better. If you, if you start getting into the clicks and where, what they're doing, you can get advanced into that, but for a smaller company, it's, it's more, it's really the, the only reason that you would have to do it overall is because Google's shutting it down. So if a company is running a pay-per-click campaign and they don't go through this transition to GA4, will their pay-per-click campaign stop working? It won't stop working, but you won't be feeding data to the machine. Oh, Google is being AI driven. It, it uses all your conversion data. It uses, you can set up audiences from GA4 because what it does with the new, with their new ads, it looks at when it looks at people, it looks at all your, your conversion actions you set up. So if it's, these people aren't click sending forms anymore, it doesn't know where to automatically control your bid, where to put your display ad. It doesn't know any of that anymore and it'll guess and it doesn't know if it's working you have to tell it what you want and what makes sense if you're running an e-commerce store and you were running it through ga4 so you weren't shop by most aren't shopify but let's say you're running it all through ga4 they're through universe analytics you would lose that data with google and it so you would essentially yeah you would lose all that data Especially e-com would really be hard hit because if you have a hundred items and you're not being fed the sales of all these items, so you have hundred items of different values, 
it can really calculate a great return based off that. The, the ROAS is the term that we use. If it doesn't have that, you have a machine that's guessing, it's trying to give you an output, it's, but it doesn't know how to optimize it. So is that a way to sell someone on why they should do this right away? If, for example, they're doing pay-per-click, if they do this right away, then the AI is going to work better and the pay-per-click campaign is going to be more effective? Is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, you can make sure it's working. You can do, if something isn't firing, you can fix it. It gives it a chance to build audiences before you fully switch over. So audiences are under, you go under admin here. They give you a whole ton of these audiences, but these take time to build. They're like in universal analytics and you can create these. So if you're not sending this data, they have to build. So the sooner you build them, the sooner you can start building is up. If I had full admin to this, you could go create one based off different events. So are those audiences um, used for retargeting? Yes, they can also be used in the new performance max where it's also used, you can tell it what people you want it to go after. The new Google with their, with their new advertising, some of their new ad formats that are automated, you're actually gaining the ability to remarket that, that's one use. And you can also say, these are the type of people I want you to go after. Their latest ad format, Performance Max, you don't even use keywords. It's audience signals. It's You do use keywords in a sense that you can say, here's a group of keywords by theme called a custom segment but then you're feeding them this. So it's grouping keywords, it's purchasing bundles of data people know. So you're not manually inputting just keywords. They're just a piece of that puzzle now. And you're feeding it all these other signals and pre-created ones that Google has that it knows it has audience of people in the market for certain things. The whole way of running Google is you still have the standard search, but the direction it's moving is more like Facebook with some keywords as a bonus. Because I, when I looked at the Facebook pay-per-click, I was amazed by how you could filter out like someone's income and where they live and their profession. So if you want to target only, you know, dentists that make more than 300000 a year in San Diego, you could do that. Is that does Google have that sort of um, ability with pay-per-click to really narrow down the target? It has demographic targeting. Yes, you can do that. And it has 800, 867 built-in audiences as well that you can observe. The observe means it'll tell you who's interacted. And if they've started converting and there's enough people, you can actually target them. But you need a lot of volume for that. But it also gives you insight into what types of products or who to target so that's for search. So if you're running a search ad and you find a lot of people or your customers drive a Mazda car, you could say on the newer ones or display, I want to target people on a Mazda. And so then you can do demographic information by income, gender, location. There's certain job industries. Yeah, you can do all that. Well, that's really um, interesting stuff. Does anyone else have any questions for Daryl? Yeah, I do. Hi. I'll go for it. Um, so I, I, and I don't know, maybe this is why everybody else is pretty quiet too. I feel pretty overwhelmed watching this and I'm wondering if there is um, a way to kind of learn, you know, like, like what can we do for a client without being a master of all this? What can we do in, let's say, a one hour kind of a thing where we say, okay, you want to track your audience on a real basic level. Let's say it's a site that's not selling product, but just a, you know, like a, 
I don't know, a small, a small local business and wants to just know are the, you know, what are the demographics of the people hitting their, their site just on a real basic sort of usage for Google Analytics, kind of an old school concept of it. How, is there a, is there a straight path to set something up relatively quickly? In other words, like under an hour once with familiarity, could you, is there a way to kind of, do you have a demo like that or is there a sort of a I agree one there's a way in, a, in an hour you could put it on the site if and you don't even have to put it, so you would get install the tag manager install google analytics actually it depends what you want to track if you just want to see the default data which is what traffic is doing and say track a lead form that has a thank you page you put on G google analytics four and then you make an event that says when page title is viewed um, um you can call it say someone use a thank you page you could say thank you page view give it 24 hours it'll create that event turn it on as a conversion you're done that's the really the simplest way and you can do that in under an hour mm -hmm. if you need more if you're tracking other stuff you can, if you're trying to track elements appearing stuff like that or multiple things can you do it just to like like um, that they scrolled down the homepage, like why so much why offset and then it triggers an event. In other words, we just want to know, like, did they, did yes, they get beyond can. the landing, the hero section and scroll down the page and we'd like to trigger an event to know at least we got them to scroll down to the bottom of the landing page. I would use Tag Manager for that. Tag Manager has scroll depth. You say scroll depth of this percent, if it does fire this and, and then it there's probably might even be one built into Google Analytics for if not you just call it scroll 25 percent there's a lot of built-in stuff but that I'm even still learning as I go if it doesn't have a built-in event you just make one up I've done that for clients if they have two different lead forms and then you just make that a yeah and then it doesn't even have to be conversion you could see how many people perform that event because tag manager will just send it as an event to Google Analytics 4. So we can literally create as many of these tagged events as we want and say this this how many people scrolled 25 percent this this per, this number of people scrolled 75 percent and this many people click through to another page. Exactly. And it does and many, many of these events as we want depending on what the client wants to wants to get information about. 100 percent right. and it tracks a lot of that out of the box too so you probably don't need tag manager for some of those but if you want specialized stuff tag manager is a lot of options but yeah i have to go into tag manager that can get in depth too there's a lot you can do you can do a lot of customizable tags if you want and stack them and then just have it send over as a single event to google analytics for and it looks clean in google analytics and the nice thing about Google Tag Manager is if you're tracking on Facebook and say you're running other ad platforms, you can have one conversion event set up on your site and then just have it send, say when this fires, you could then have it go to your other advertising platforms. So if a person came from say LinkedIn or Facebook or somewhere else, you only set it up once. So there, that's the advantage of Google Tag Manager as well. If you're doing more than the website, it centralizes it all. Does that make sense? Not the last bit. Can you explain more what you mean about doing it only once? All right. So when you're centralizing it, what a so when you create a tag, what it's doing, it's so a trigger. So let's say someone scrolled down the page 25%, right? And you want to know, say you're running a Facebook ad, a LinkedIn ad, and a Google ad. And in each of those, you want to know if someone comes from each of those sources, you want it to tell link if, if they come from one of those sources, you want to know if that user scrolled out far down. Well, you can see that in Google Analytics 4, and you could also have that advertising platform. You could, within there, you could have an audience of, oh, such and such, scroll, so scrolled this far in the platform, and that can be an audience. An audience is just, it's a bucket of data, people took a certain action, and then you can use that to, to serve certain types of ads to them and content. Uh -huh. 
right? These are all buckets of data, right? That's all these things are on Google, right. especially analytics. And when you're targeting, they take their data and they put in these nice, tidy, clean buckets. And you say, I want these people, just like Facebook. And then as you serve that, you find who engages, you create out of that, you take a certain amount of people, maybe you mix people from different buckets of data and you get this mixed group of data that's actually what you really want. And if you know what they want and you put it with that to that data, you now have better results. And that's really the long-term goal of advertising. You're taking usually pre-existing data, you're getting it in, keeping what you want, mixing some existing, and then you build these different pools and then it knows how to find similar than each of these different buckets if they work together. So say you have someone who wants to buy a car, they're looking, then they're researching and they're buying. Now those platforms know, okay, I know where these people are and it will start picking them. It'll go, okay, I want you. I know how to find these people and it, it'll keep filling the bucket as they're searching. It'll know when to show it to new people looking and these different platforms. And the good thing about having, does that kind of make? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm trying to, yeah, that's the idea with Google Analytics and seeing this data. You can use it to craft audiences in Google Analytics as well. And when you have an audience in Google Analytics 4, the other advantage to it is that becomes a filter view. So you, I can say this is, used to be called a segment in the old version. Now um, you can hike. You can take an audience. Say, I want to see uh, people from this audience, how many took such an action. It'll say, okay, so all people that are like this, how many of them, you know, let's see what they did. And I want to know if they did this. You can now filter to see what they're doing. And then maybe they won't call an audience. They're still changing things. They always change things. But it also gives you the ability to filter down to help you see relevant data to your business when you're making a decision on what to do. So even if you're not running paid advertising, having these audiences from that local, for that local company, they can now see what they're doing and they compare it to those who aren't. And if they go, oh, well, these people spend more time here and I know they buy from me. So you're tracking, you know, say they send in a form, something simple. You say, well, these people are sending more than this one and you can compare and you can it's playing around with data and just trying to build these buckets of data. It's kind of view it like that. Okay, thank you. I have another question, Daryl. How did you um, get to be good with Google Analytics for? How were you trained on it? Did you just was it were you self taught off of YouTube or did you go through some formal training or what was that process like? self-taught took courses went on youtube i had to learn it for google for google ads i used you i was using universal analytics and i was the stubborn one until about hmm, maybe last summer this last fall to be honest and google said we're shutting it down i said well i'm running ad accounts so i guess i better learn it and then i fast tracked it get the basics and start getting more advanced and now when someone needs it set up, I just learn what needs to be done. And I work with someone who's really good with server side. So either way, if some, whatever someone needs with Google Analytics for, I know the client's covered. And one more question, and that is, can you in the chat put in your contact information so that if someone sees this, we may upload this to YouTube or something? Uh, they know how to get a hold of you. I don't know if you want to put an email or however, or your LinkedIn or just a way to get a hold of you. I can do my email too. Um, I can share the deck if people want it. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, because if we're recording this, I don't know that the chat line gets put into the recording. So I think you can, can upload it here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why I made a presentation. I do have a, a question for other people. For When I was creating this, I wasn't sure the level that everyone was on. So if you notice when I was presenting it, I touched on a few things while trying to keep it as entry or uh, basic as I could. 
Did everyone get uh, got something from it, I'm hoping? Because it, it can really get technical fast. So I tried to keep it as simple as I could while still explaining it because it's... I, I would say it was per, you could, it, would, it was good. Thank you. I agree. I thought you did a good job explaining it. I mean, with the type of clients I have, they're, most of them don't really even, they're not that interested in the stats. They're, the bottom line for them is they just want the phone to ring and someone said, hey, I found your website on Google and I want to pay you money to do whatever. They're not that sophisticated. So I don't know that much about Google analy Analytics for that reason. And I'm not a pay-per-click person. So, but you know, it's always good to learn more. And I suppose at some point, maybe I will start doing pay-per-click, but right now I'm more of an SEO enthusiast. You can still use Google Analytics for SEO. It's blocking the file. So I think I might, I'm, I'd have to email it. So what I'll do here, this is my, I'm just, a, if this goes out, um, I people might use it to spam me. I know it sounds silly, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I get so much here. I'll do this one. I'll, this is my generic one. Just if you send it to this one, you'll, and just in case, because yeah, that's my email. I'll have to send it to you. You'll see my real one when I respond. And that's hello at aydmarketing.com. Yeah. It's, oh. it's saying that it doesn't like my PowerPoint. I guess I could do a Google link if people want. What do people prefer? Do you want a Google link or do you, I can just email it? I don't know what's easy. I can do whatever's easiest. It's a PowerPoint. I think, think email is probably easy, but you know, if you share the video on YouTube, it can easily get put into, into the description there as a, as a downloadable. Oh, that's a good point. Sure, I could make it a power. Yeah. I could make it a PDF. Yeah. That's probably easiest for most people most universal yeah okay well when you put that up let me know and then we can do that for now and if someone wants it send me an email or connect on linkedin and i'll send it over in the meantime i tried sharing it here and it wouldn't let me all right outstanding does anyone else have any final questions for daryl before we um kind of move into the next phase of this zoom meeting Someone had a question about advanced GA4. I don't know if, is he still here? Was it time to remember it was, was it Brian? Oh, I didn't have a question. Not you, someone, someone was here. I was curious. Someone had about advanced on me. I'm not sure if he left or not. It was a mic, I think. Someone left, so I was just curious if I answered his, if he had anything. All right, well, no one has questions. Well, thank you, Daryl. I really appreciate you doing that tonight. Well, thank you for having me. And if you want to stick around, you can. But if you got to go, we understand that too. I can stick around for a bit. I want to thank you a lot, Daryl. And I'm and I'm apologizing in advance because I'm going to have to watch this thing on replay because I've been doing stuff here in the background. But as I walked through the room, I was like, I want to listen to this. This is interesting stuff. Yeah. So no, let's, I, yeah, I wanted to go back to your agenda. I mean, one thing I, it's seven and we have till seven 30, right? So um, there was someone that had a problem updating their website. The young, who's yeah. the young? Was that Denise that couldn't up, update her website? Yes, that's me. Uh, I've already told uh, my hosting uh, company that I hope that they're going to solve the problem, but this is what you told. And uh, I also uh, want to advise what should I do? I want to get advice. 
So Edward, does it make sense to ask Denise to share her screen and show us what's going on? Sure. Do you want to try that, Denise? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what was the description of exactly what was going on. Did we were we able to ascertain that it was? Because uh, I mean, there's so many different things. That yeah. Could, everything. So, uh, is it what? Are you on the current version of WordPress? You're trying to update your WordPress installation. Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm using uh, six point zero three, uh, but uh, it's asking from me to uh, complete the. Uh, this version, uh, six one one, and uh, when I want to update my site, I again get this. Uh, it won't. It won't allow the update. Okay. Um. What What I because I have one of the websites encounter such issue that I'm not able to update, but not in WordPress update. Uh, I'm not able to edit with Elementor. Uh, so uh, a website developer in India told me that that is because uh, we shouldn't go to update those like uh, WordPress or, or plugins because they may not be compatible to the template that we use. So that's, that was the reasons that I was told. Uh, so uh, which which section should I go now? Uh, look at the plugins. Check, yeah, look at your install plugins. There is likely an issue with one of those plugins. It's not allowing you to upgrade. Yeah, I can delete all of them because it's uh, just in the beginning of the, uh, I didn't even create the site. Can you I scroll just, down and wait. let us see what else is in there? You always want to try, before you delete things, try deactivating them first. None are active. They're all deactivated. They're all deactivated. Yeah, they're okay. all de no, no, don't do that. So there's a problem with 6.1. And then there's a fix. So you need to be upgraded to 6.1.1. And what theme are you using? In, in the appearance section, what, what theme are you using? Still there. Did we lose it? Uh, sorry, because of my internet connection. Got it. Click on appearance on the left. There, and then themes. 2022? Yeah. 2022, Could it be a PHP version? <laughs> Some hosts. I didn't notice. Uh, slow to update their PHP. Well, it used to be on the dashboard. It would tell you if your PHP version was out of date. I didn't notice that when we were on the main dashboard page a second ago. OK, it might not be. I've run into that. It's people's all no, yeah, that, because this host is a version behind and, and then everything on your site doesn't work. You can't update anything. Do you have any idea what version of PHP you're running? I'm forgetting the lady's name. Uh, it was, uh, you mean six zero and. Uh, well, that's the WordPress. Go to your dashboard real quick on the upper far left. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Scroll down. There should be. Yeah, a, wait, wait, wait. I just saw a PHP. Oh, oh, yeah, up, 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 up. Scroll up. Stop, stop. You went past down, it. down a little bit. See where it says PHP update recommended? Yeah, that's that's your I site is running it. an insecure version of PHP. Oh. Now you're running 5.6. That's, oh, that's why. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah. You want to, if you're not confident in changing your PHP version, you might want to contact your host and have them. Maybe not put you. Uh, what are we at? Eight zero. Uh, I wouldn't go to know. eight. Go to seven. Six. Go to seven two or something like that. And seven six is super stable. That seven is seven four is the recommended minimum. Yeah, that's. I found that PHP, if anything, has usually been the main thing that has caused the root of tons of problems on a WordPress yep. site for me. Yep. So do you have access to your cPanel, or do you need to contact your host to talk to them about it? But that would be the place to start. Would be to look into your getting uh, PHP updated. Who yeah. is your web? Who is your web host, Denise? It's uh, this one. Keber host. Yeah, this is Turkish. Got it. Okay. Well, I have no idea how good they are. Uh, what do they have? So actual tech support, or do you have to fill out a, a work ticket and wait for a response? 
Yeah, I have uh, already uh, sent the mail to them, but I have an offer. I can uh, give the control. Uh, I mean, is this the only thing that I should uh, uh, connect? Uh, I, I should, should I ask my host or can I give the control, remote control to Edward? Maybe you can do it. No, no, no. I, I, I would, I, I would never go into a website uh, that ill-advisedly. There's, there's too many things going on here uh, to start willy-nilly. And let's start with one thing: Have you been backing up your website? Do you have? Does your web host back up? Uh, do snapshots of your website? Do you have some sort of plugin that backs up your website? No, none of them was updated before. This is the yeah. only. Yeah, this is the first time. If it were me, I would contact the web host and make sure that they, they do a backup of the site if they can. Um, at the very least, copy you know all your files um, and your database so that moving forward, because that's the thing when you when you let things get outdated, uh, sometimes as you then bring them up to date, things can interact in not a nice way. Uh, but I would start with making sure, starting, I always start, when I go into any website, I make sure that there's a backup available. If there isn't, then I make every effort to get it backed up before I touch anything, and that includes PHP versions, uh, at which point in time, you then would move forward to trying to get your web host to bring your PHP more up to date. Um, and then you can then move on to doing updates uh, to your, uh, well, WordPress, first of all, and then your plugins. So in order, backup. Mm -hmm. Verify that there is one because some some web hosts automatically back up. They may have thirty days worth of automatic backups. I don't know. Different web hosts do different things. Number two, ask them once a good backup is in place. Ask them to bring your PHP. Um, again, I don't know that I would bring it all the way up to who. Somebody said seven point six is probably the best one, and I would probably agree. Um, so see if they can bring it back to at least 7.6. And if that goes well, you know, every time there's a step, you check the site to make sure that it hasn't, you know, there's nothing awry. Um, and, and at that point in time, you would probably want to go forward and, uh, and do the other updates, the plugins. So always proceed with caution and with the backup in your pocket whenever possible because i tell you you don't want to just i don't know how much you have on this site how many how many pages is this site nothing oh well then yeah i just wanted to see uh what is this wordpress uh, oh okay okay well then then you probably don't have a whole lot to lose so well you, if, no, if there's nothing, nothing there yet if there's literally nothing there just do a fresh install with a new version with tell tell your host oh. I want to do a fresh install install 7. Point, have them put it on php 7.6 and just do a fresh wordpress install that's there's nothing there that's that's yeah where it starts yeah this is the simple one there is absolutely nothing on this site that you want to keep no uh, everything can that, be deleted yeah yeah I, I would agree with uh, Mr. No Panic there. Um, yeah, if there's nothing here, start over. That way you'll be starting with a fresh slate. Make sure that uh, a backup, you have some backup routine, uh, either courtesy of your web host or something that you install well. Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, I mean, my thing is if they're running that old of a version of PHP, that makes me um, not think very highly of the host. I could not agree more. I was thinking, yeah. You may want to consider getting a better hosting company because that to me is a red flag. You're going to have trouble in the future if you continue working with this site. I agree. So do you think that uh, it should be uh, done automatically, this update? 
you can set it up to do it automatically. I'm not a fan of automatic updates. I prefer to, you know, get, get your game up a little bit. I mean, that's what people like Chuck and myself do with, you know, when we tutor people is, is to get their game up. Um, Cause you, you want to have some basic skills. You don't have to be a, a web developer, but when you're going to be running a website, you want to have some basic things in place and, uh, being able to ascertain that you've that you've got uh, current software and and plugins is kind of a basic, you know. Also, you want to make sure that the plugins you use in the first place are ones that are not going to cause you a headache further down the road, because there's yeah. nothing worse than to pick a bad plugin. You know, the WordPress world is very robust. There's a lot of development, but not all of it is good. And some of it is great at first, and then it gets, you know, gets abandoned. We have a lot of orphan products out there, and they can keep rolling on for like two years before WordPress acknowledges that they're dead and and removes them. You know, so. Um, but yeah, some some basics would not hurt. And the, and the the great thing is, by the way, Denise, you're coming to the WordPress world at a great time. There's a ton of tutorials. Everything from, uh, you know, I guess LinkedIn now owns what used to be, uh, uh, what was that company? I'm, I'm forgetting, but there um, was, Yeah, uh, Linda? And then they Linda do, yeah, Linda.com was uh, absorbed by LinkedIn, you know, and, and that's, I, I started out, my first experience with uh, WordPress was Linda.com. I took some of their, they have some great courses there, yeah. But you want to you want to know enough so that you can keep your some basics in place, like be able to know that you have a, a good backup in place, and be able to uh, to update your your plugins and up to keep your software updated. So and, and you know the PHP version, that's something if your web 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 host sorry is uh, worth a damn, they should be able to. Uh, to do that for you, you know, as long as you you tell them to, because they're not going to initiate it automatically. Well, some of the better ones will keep it up to date if you're careful. Less less so nowadays, though. I mean, they may have a minimum, but most well, that, of yeah, that's right. Minimum to, is different. That's a better way to put it. We yeah. launch everything at seven point four, and you, you know, eight, eight, eight has some issues. I admit, I said seven point six before. It's seven point four. Okay. Eight, eight, we see mixed reviews, and 8.1's got a bunch of issues. But like all of our sites run 7.4 PHP, but um, somebody else was mentioning Elementor before, and we run Elementor on all of our sites. And, you know, we don't we don't jump right into the updates whenever they're available, as you were saying. It, 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 it It's a complicated game. Like WordPress is not for the faint of heart or for people that really don't know don't want to keep learning and keep staying on top of the community and what's stable and what isn't you it's tricky and even with all we know i mean we're seasoned professionals we're a big team we still bonk sites sometimes and we do it the right way so it's on a staging platform and oh something went wrong let's go back and try again and figure out what it is where's the conflict and, the, and that's the thing you happen. It's not. It's not an if. It's when it does happen, and you have to know how to how to back yourself up and how to restore from a backup or from a staging. It's really important. And yeah, and that's the thing. You know, you really don't want a, a web host that's going to automatically update your PHP. I mean, a lot of them used to, but I, uh, you know, in having discussions with them, and it makes total sense. I mean, there are circumstances in place, especially when people have sorely outdated sites that by updating their PHP without their permission, it can break the site entirely. Uh, so it's yeah. usually best that if you're going into a situation like that and, and the liability question for the hosting company is why they stopped doing it by and large, but you, you don't want to go into it ill-advisedly, which is why this group itself, I mean, you may not get the most detailed help on this sort of thing, but there, this is a good place to come and maybe find somebody like myself, like Chuck. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly uh, what 
and pardon me for missing, you know, but there's other people here who also are in the business of kind of bridging the gap between, because WordPress is a great platform for a user. It's like having Microsoft Word. I tell people, if you can, if you can write me a letter in Microsoft Word and update some, uh, put some pictures in your Facebook, you're 80% of the way there. It's a very powerful tool, but the back end stuff, the some of the, the the maintenance and update nuts and bolts can be a little tricky if everything doesn't line up perfectly. And, and these companies that build plugins and themes and what have you, they're not all sitting in the same room developing everything simultaneously together. And uh, and there's never a certainty that that everything's gonna play well. So there's pretty much a certainty that it won't almost yeah per, well yes yes there is a certainty but i i, I don't like to scare off <laughs> i don't like to scare off the neophytes because i mean it's i mean it's like driving you know chances are your you, your best bet is to become a decent driver and have a good mechanic that you can call and uh, have insurance and have insurance, insurance and and on occasion you may have a problem that you didn't foresee but uh, by and large, it's uh, it's really the best. It's the best platform out there. Um, you just want to be careful that you don't tr stick your foot in deeper than you're than you're comfortable. Because the ouches, <laughs> bear me up here, guys. The ouches that come with WordPress, um, especially in, when you're at the beginning stage, if you're because it makes it so easy. You can do broad strokes and, and suddenly go, whoops. My best advice to the new users is find a few friends that are at a similar level as yourself and well, keep coming get, back on, to get on Zoom together. Well, keep coming back to these kind of groups and join some Facebook groups for, for new WordPress users. But when I started out learning WordPress, I got a couple of friends that I found on Facebook user groups and said let's learn this together let's learn elementor together um that was invaluable for us and we all were able to you know everybody's got a different perspective two or three people on a zoom call together that are all learning together right can make make a lot of a lot of advance I, I i think that's a great technique for for new people i learned how to restore that's, that's what that's that's why i stepped into this group when i saw that we had well, I think we're at just about 900 people in this, in this particular meetup. Wow. Uh, you know, so that's, that's a pretty rich community, you know, to draw from. So as we, as these groups, you know, and, and we'll always have the chance, by the way, at some point in time, I can see this group getting large enough that we can start using the breakout rooms. You know, if you have problems with uh, latency, we're going to set up this one. We'll have one, uh, a breakout room for SEO questions. And Is there a Discord for your group? Or I'm, I'm fairly new to Meetup in general. I've, I've never used it with this kind of thing, but. We haven't, you know, so far, this is this is the, the, the biggest turnout so far, because I mean, we've only had a handful of, of Zoom meetings since, well, since I got re-involved. And prior to my reinvolvement, it had been February of 2020 uh, was the last time this group was active. And that was, uh, I think, a, a dozen or a couple dozen people got together in person. So we're still kind of hammering out the, the future of this group, but I can see that it's going to, there's some cool possibilities, you know. I can see us having, you know, we'll throw Daryl in this in the SEO room, you know, and and uh, Chuck can handle the, uh, the the hosting room, and you know, because if we get to the point where we've got forty or sixty people in here, which would be awesome, um, there will be all kinds of resources for you, Denise. <laughs> So where do you want to go next, Chuck? We're at um, 7.20. Isn't it about present next, the wrap-up topics? Does anyone else want to present? I'm reading the agenda here. Yeah. Um, do, do we call you anything other than no panic design? Yeah, my name's Jonathan. Jonathan, okay. Um, you might want to, next time you come in, 
be Jonathan slash no panic design or something like that. So we don't have to call you no panic. Right. <laughs> uh, is there, is there a topic, uh, anybody here that would like to, uh, present the next time we get together? It's okay if you don't, but I just thought I'd ask. I could think about it. I mean, we, we, um, definitely have some areas that we focus on, Yeah, but I would have to think about it and you can reach out to me through uh, the meetup messaging okay. or you can find me uh, via at my WordPress guy or reach out to Chuck. Okay. And let I would, I would recommend if someone's doing a presentation or considering it, I would, this is not pressuring anybody. I propose it now and ask the people here now what they would be interested in. And then you wouldn't go in as blind as I was because I had no idea who would be here. So it was a little bit all over for that reason, but I was trying to cover just enough at the basic level and it, it worked out. Yeah. I kind of did my best experience where to kind of start. So yeah, if I was to do it, I would have said, I'm going to do GA for what do you want to learn? And I could have had something very step-by-step step because I knew what people wanted. I wonder if there's not a way to make a forced, uh, some sort of a like questionnaire that if you're going to register for the event, you have to fill it out and there could be the presenter could make like 12 topics and say, you must you please select three or more so that that way the presenter gets some sort of, I mean, like out of the box, it's kind of hard to say, uh, well, I don't know what it all involves and that's why I want to join. So I can't really tell you what I want you to focus on because right. I wouldn't even know I, how to phrase it. You know, from what I know of, of, of web design, generally when you start putting requirements on people that that's when you, your audience starts dropping off or people don't engage as much i think at, at this point in time we we want to just encourage participation and and this sort of discussion will will kind of uh, you know breathe. or make it optional i mean maybe not required but at least the other side of that of course is that if you say to people you give them a blank page, they're going to have a hard time populating it. But if you say, here's here's two text blocks and here's six image slots, fill them in, then they say, oh, okay, I need six images. I can find six images. I didn't know if I needed 600 or what. So giving well, I've, I've, been putting, I've, I've been putting out those inquiries, uh, both in, the, in the, the group description and also in every event. Uh, I'm encouraging people to uh, uh, bring their questions or suggestions. And also, if anybody would like to be a participant, I mean, I'm sorry, not a participant, but a presenter. Um, so we'll definitely do that. And we'll, uh, you know, when we, uh, maybe when we welcome people to the group, we can throw that out too. I haven't been being as, as vigorous on that myself since I've been so tied up with this darn relocation thing. Yeah, it's a lot of work moving. I made a Google questionnaire and it was just three things you, you were curious about with GA4. They could just put, what is GA4? How do I use it for my business? How do I get it to my clients? I mean, it wasn't, you could have been very, yeah, I didn't get any responses though. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people don't think about it until, until the moment. I mean, some people will have an issue but a lot will just kind of come up to them and it's okay. You know, we're, we're, we'll work through it. We're not, we're not beholden to any format, you know, even the, even the format that we followed tonight is kind of loosey goosey and it'll come together as we go. But also Daryl and, and all of you guys, if you're, um, if you connect with other people in the meetup or WordPress world, um, put out the feelers, you know, see if there's anybody who has a presentation or has um you know something they want to contribute or something they'd like to receive from i think well not to put anyone on the spot i think web hosting is a good one a lot of people newer to the web world anyways and wordpress they overlook the importance of picking a reputable host whether you go with site ground or no panic design or whatever it is who, who do you like by the way site ground I've used SiteGround, Green Geeks, and I just got A2 hosting recently. They're pretty good. Okay. But I usually go with something a little more reviewed. I don't go with a really cheap 
I'm yeah, I mean also those they've all been really good. Sightground's awesome. They have great support. Green Geeks is okay, not as good as Sightground, as good, but it's decent. A2's been good so far. Um their support's important. Well, I'll usually vet them is I'll actually go to their sales chat sometimes and I'll see how they treat me. Because if they're responsive and how they treat you there, I mean, sales will always be a little bit, but you can tell, right? If they're really easy to work through their chat and their systems. Oh yeah, Flywheel, yeah. Flywheel is one of the really rock solid, it's, it's managed WordPress. It's to me probably top tier in terms of, I mean, unless you go boutique and we're actually hosting resellers, we don't manage our own servers, but. WHMS, um, right, isn't it? Isn't it? it is that platform yeah you know the you, you want man i mean some people know how to just use a bare bones server and set it all up and do all the back end work themselves but it seems like the main conversation here is focused around like managed wordpress where they're managing the servers for you and if you have an issue you can contact them and you know i mean it's expensive. You can get $3 a month hosting, or you can pay $24 a month hosting for flywheel, but it's rock solid. I also like, I, I, we offer light speed, which our servers are light speed and not nginx and it's faster and the caching is fast and the CDN is fast and it's light speed cache with quick cloud for the CDN. And, uh, you know, it, it yeah, don't use GoDaddy. <laughs> yeah, they're bad. They are bad. And plus, their ethics are very questionable. Um, HostGator, I've I've heard mixed reviews on. Them. Bad like, too. Use, I don't yeah. think they're that great. Well, most of these have like an evolution. Like when I started working um, in the WordPress world years ago, I was with uh, I forget who it was, Zero Host or I now. I can't, I can't even remember, but I. See, I made less of a technical decision and more of a marketing decision because uh, at first I would tell people I'll, I'll work with whatever hosting company you have. But a lot of the my customers, which tend to be mom and pops, they were a lot of them were using GoDaddy or, or already knew about GoDaddy. So it was less of a sell since I didn't have a dog in the fight anyway. Uh, to have them go with GoDaddy because it's whatever you say about them, they're a known quantity. Um, I'm also one of their web pros. They eventually sucked me into that program. But, you know, if you tell somebody about SiteGround or, or A2 or something like that, they're, you know, they're just going to want you to recommend something. Whereas with GoDaddy, it's ubiquitous. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a household name so far. I mean, they've stepped on their Johnson's more than a few times, but at the end of the day, they're still not as horrible as going with the guy who's got a server crackling in the corner, sending off sparks and smoke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I resemble first, that remark and I actually don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it would probably sting somebody. Somebody's got that server in the corner of the basement, yeah. We don't, I mean, we, I, I won't say who we, who we, uh, have our reseller account with but we use one of the big giants and we pick them because they're we well we picked them because their reviews we pick them because their their price point as well and or we can offer the customer service and they offer the back end to us you know i mean i i've had i was with rack space before and they were not you know they're they're good Rackspace is good. Um, they're not uh, WordPress dedicated. Um, they have a new division, which is, I forget what it's called, but, um, uh, you know, WordPress optimized platform, it does make a speed difference and speed's, speed's important. Yeah. yeah. I've done tests on, it does matter. And well, I'd say if you're really, really small, I know, if you don't get a lot of traffic, the cheap hosting is not recommended. But if it's really just some tiny site no one goes to, you're never going to notice. It's once you, if you actually want speed and to rank, and it, you got to. Is at the end of the day, though, those ones where you know the web server is in you know in Egypt or something. I'm just taking that. You yeah. Know, um, 
then when, if anything goes wrong, and chances are you're going to be in a fight and, and you're going to need help to fill out a job ticket and then sit there and wait 48 to 72 hours in hopes that mm -hmm. you might get a response. And then you'll get you know, a response in broken English um, to which you have to now reply and then wait another 48 to 72 hours. That process can be excruciating. Um, and Is it that long? I've never used hosting it that cheap. I always said, well, I went with something that was at least reputable. Yeah, that's... I've, I've come across, you know, I mean, not recently, um, but I've come across some pretty slow uh, tech support. And, and I mean, say what you will, I, I, I do lean towards the one that do have 24-7 uh phone support no it's almost mandatory or at least 24 7 chat so i don't do web support i have some smaller clients and i don't really manage their website or do much with it because i'm running the ads the, uh -huh. the most important thing to me you, know, you mentioned support is if it, the client says because i don't really you i keep it um most of an arm's length some of them most of these are just clients i've had from a few years ago i can message their support say the site's not working, fix it because I don't want to touch it. That's that's how I look at it. And SiteGround has been good for that. Green Geeks, anything that's not super cheap, they'll go, oh yeah, we figured out it's just PHP something and something to do with had to do the cache or yeah. So great, fixed, awesome. <laughs> yeah. The the tech, the good support. tech support. Yeah, for Nexus is great. Their tech support. I, I mean, I actually really love their Nexus is the WordPress division of Rack, uh, Rackspace. Okay. Um, and they're pretty awesome. And I, I think they're actually not using light speed still, but. Well, hey guys, um, under normal circumstances, I would keep the parking lot open for chat and such, um, but I'm tight on time tonight. Is there anything else that uh, that is a must cover for tonight? Otherwise, let's move into winding down and. Um, and getting out of the dodge. Yeah, I gotta get going here too. It was good seeing everyone. Um, actually, what I, I hope be, we'll go ahead. We should probably drop our info in the chat, then we could save it if our LinkedIn or whatever people want to put down there if they mm -hmm. want, and we can connect. No pressure. Just if someone yes, wants. That's a good idea. Or I'll drop mine in. Look at my look for myself on LinkedIn. <laughs> All right. And I'm trying to remember my LinkedIn. I think it's just there. Yeah. No one go to my site right now. It's terrible. <laughs> that is done. The cobbler whose children run barefoot. That's the story of my life, man. <laughs> I'm making guys. It hey, hey Daryl, I want to thank you again for uh, for putting out what you uh, what you obviously earned in a hard way. That was good information. What I heard. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to it on the replay. But I appreciate your time. And come oh, you're welcome. I hope you I hope you'll come back uh and be part of this group. That was good. And the next time, yeah, I'd be curious to learn about some other stuff that people want to share on. Exactly. Yeah, it'll be cool if we have this uh this group grow into something a little bit more uh more sizable and we can start uh covering more topics and doing the breakout rooms and all that sort of stuff. Jonathan, thanks for being here. Denise. Wendy, Veronica, everybody, thanks for being here. I'm going to shut her down at this point. Everyone save your chat. Yeah, don't forget to say. Oh, we called it down. Last call. Yeah, click the three little dots to the right of the chat window and click save chat. All right, everybody had a chance to do so? I did.
All right then. Everyone have a great night. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. Have a good night.